Almost two years ago, we left it all behind for a chance at the sailing adventure of a lifetime. It has not been smooth sailing since then, but together we are learning and laughing our way through. Our hope is that if we laugh long enough, we can make our merry way around the world. And this... This is a Millennial Falcon. How does it feel to wake up to a full canvas underway, babe? Surprise! Tiring. <laughs> well, if I hadn't have had the engine going for a little while, then I might have been surprised, but... I thought about sailing off the mooring, but like it was pretty crowded and the wind was really confused in there. Yeah, no, it's actually good to be underway when you're knowing that you're already making moves and you're already going in the direction that you want to go even before you're up, kind of thing. So I'm up. It's a beautiful day for it. I'm glad we really delayed our departure by one day because yeah. it was rubbish weather yesterday and today's like glorious sunny day will be there. I woke up this morning and it's just a beautiful sunny day. We've got like 13 to 20 knots sort of on a beam slash broad reach. Um, and it's, it's great. It's pointing us directly where we want to go. It's a nice downwind practice for us. Unfortunately, we don't have the pole back in action yet, but that's why we're going back to St. Martin. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad we left. I hate sailing when it's cloudy. I really don't actually mind how much wind or waves there are. I just don't like it when it's cloudy. Something about the ominous feel of a cloud really just messes with my attitude about the sailing day. But if it's sunny and you're out here battling against the wave and the wind, it's like, yeah, what a beautiful day to go out and have a go at the, uh, have a go at the ocean sort of thing. It's funny because he did actually say yesterday, uh, I would much, much rather prefer to go today. Um, because it's, although it's uh, more wind, we actually expected more wind. He was like, I'd just prefer to go today because it's not cloudy. So. <laughs> Just pulling up to Maragot and we can see yet another Tayana 42. This will be the third one that we've seen, we think. <laughs> it's such a popular boat. Um, it's taken us about four hours, I think, just to sail up here. Uh, what is our plan this afternoon? Check back in. Oh yeah, we do. Uh, groceries? Yes, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we do a little bit of uh, off the tour kind of things today, uh, and then tomorrow we're going to actually start on the boat work. So we'll head to a um, a. So tomorrow we head to a fabricator, and we'll get stuck on that uh, spinning pole trying to get that fixed. Having settled back into St. Martin, it was time to get our game faces on. I did a mammoth provision for what I hoped would last about three months, stocking up on all of the essentials. Meanwhile, I had the mounting ring for the spinnaker pole repaired, although it seemed I missed the memo about putting it the correct way up. We loaded up the tanks and filled up as much diesel, water and petrol as we could carry. We spent a long time poring over charts and weather windows. We scrubbed the hull back to brand new, and most importantly... We got a new dinghy! We went to the markets um, on the Saturday, and uh, the market, same markets that we found um, our radar head from. Anyway, this market is freaking awesome. We went in there, it was the last one for the whole season. And we got a new dinghy! We don't have a name for it yet though, so I'm not too sure what we should call it. But yeah, there she is. There's been some pretty She's, fantastic uh, uh, suggestions on our Instagram though. Oh, I Some of go. them are awesome. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sweet, all right. So we'll definitely, definitely have a name for the dinghy soon. 
Ah, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm corpsifying the old dinghy. Oh. Taking out all my old frustration on this thing. Our precious little dinghy has been with us since the beginning. Yeah. Who we, we tried hate to, uh, to blow up. We tried to give it away and no one was interested. It's too hard. No one would steal it. So <laughs> we have to chop it up and put it in a skip, which uh, which one of the locals advised us was the best way to dispose of it. So I wasn't really expecting to be doing this the day before we depart to uh, Bermuda, but <laughs> such is life. Hey Ads, what day is it? It's leaving day. <laughs> you sound so enthusiastic. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? I'm just checking the forecast and I'm less than enthused because we should have left two days ago. We were, we were delayed for reasons we can't really control. Um, the disposal of the dinghy took a day longer than it was supposed to. Like the far end of the forecast had not sort of filled in. Um, and so it didn't really matter when we left, so we weren't too worried. But this morning, it looks like towards the end of our duration, um, it's going to be like filling in from the north. So that's like a headwind in the last 100 miles, potentially, unless we can just squeeze in there before it fills in. So we, we can't afford to just drift around out there. I think the motor's going to have to come on if, uh, if it's, you know, drift, drifting material. Yeah, we're almost ready to go. We're about 15 minutes off leaving. Seven days, I think. Oh, around about seven days. I was going to show you that, you plum. No. Adam is back to his captaining position behind the wheel. I'm sure that you will notice as well. Serious day. Until we get course, and then I'll go to my sloth spot. Yeah, sure you will. <laughs> it takes me 12 hours to really adjust to everything, the whole, the whole life thing. Probably a full shift actually, it takes me a full 24 hour shift change with no problems to, uh, to stop checking everything every five minutes. Adam is the worst on sailing dates because like even now he hasn't eaten anything, he hasn't like barely, no, he's got some water but like he's barely drunk anything. He just goes around and like, just, I don't know, like marches around like, what's wrong with that? What's going on there? What's, what about this? Or, and it's really quiet as well. Like other than that, he just doesn't eat anything, doesn't like do anything on leaving I day. I will, just so after we've been at sea for like two hours and we're courses set, there's nothing to navigate around. Once we're good to go, then I'll start eating and drinking and I'll probably have another cup of coffee. He'll stay there the music whole on. time. Put some music on. We should actually. She put the, she put Millie's opera we on should, because she's been so good will, so that far. That will calm me down, knowing that she's a, 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 a pleased. So maybe maybe we should. I think it just calms Adam down. Adam dislikes the opera. I may not put this footage in, but you'll see that I have my very Asian style <laughs> <laughs> sun gloves on. Stars. I bought them. I bought them uh, the other week and Adam was just like laughing his ass off at me and he's like, oh my god, you are such a ginger. But it's just so freaking hot here and I get sunburned in like minutes. So I'm afraid that if you see me looking real, real nerdy, then now uh, then this is the reason why. Safety first. Safety first. Yeah, screaming. I've got like a reef in the main, maybe three quarters of a jib. We're doing seven knots. We have 21. 21 knots of breeze at 120 off the uh, starboard bow, starboard yeah, quarter, we sorry. And uh, we're 7.3 knots. We're going to yeah. be 100, like by this time tomorrow, we'll be 110 miles away, I reckon. Awesome. This is good news. Yeah. So, no, but this is good because we make, like, the forecast was for 16, 16 knots southeast. Oh, so the direction is right, but the, I don't know, maybe it's a compression breeze or something. But we're getting a little bit more wind than we thought we were going to get, uh, and so we're going a lot quicker, like two knots faster than I expected to be going. If we can hold this for the rest of the day, that'll get us a half day ahead of the uh, the calm that's coming on the 17th. And if we motor through the calm, that'll get us a full day ahead of the uh, the headwind front 
that's coming through uh, Bermuda on the 20th. So it should be good. We're gonna, we need to thread the needle a bit to try not to have to bash to windward. So in the first hour, it's looking good. <laughs> Might be too soon to call. Uh, yeah, really getting your great side. You've zoomed in, haven't you? Very much so. How was your first day? Oh, it's not over yet, but how's your first day going? It's actually been a really, really, really good first day, I reckon. I totally just jinxed us by saying that. Um, we've had like, we've been doing about seven knots or so, about six and a half to seven knots. We've had uh, kind of less than 18 knots most of the day, of wind, sorry, wind. So we've had like, we had to shake out the first reef that we started with. We put up um, a full sail, which is awesome. We've just been like flying along. It's been fantastic. I went downstairs earlier, had my little nap in preparation for my night shift. Adam went downstairs, watched a movie and drank beer and peanuts where he lives. <laughs> so, uh, you know, different levels there. But like Adam is significantly more relaxed, I think. Yep. Um, and, I'm, and I'm pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> and on the flip side, lads, how's your day? We started out with uh, we started out with about 22 knots coming out of St Martin, which I think was just compression and land breeze, and it held at about 20. So we had a reef and a three quarter jib, and I was also looking for um, looking to test our weather helm because I don't I can't remember if I said it, but having changed the backstay uh, before we went to St Bart's, um, we you know we obviously messed with the rake angle a little bit, and I hadn't had a chance to check it. And it was such a lovely calm sail to St. Bart's and back that it was only when we got a bit of a compression gust coming back into Marigold Bay that I realized we had some pretty severe weather help. And so I backed off the uh, backstay um, and I hadn't had a chance to check it. And we are like, we're beautifully balanced. I've, I've, uh, I've got it right in one, I think. We've had like, we've had 15, we've had 18, we've had 23, 22, 25 knots. And, uh, this means that it's well balanced. Short it's canvas, fair. full canvas, and she's just she just leans over and takes off, which is exactly what we want. There's a little bit of weather helm in there, but it's like the autopilot just immediately trims it out and carries on. And I think that's reflected by our like, by our speed. Um, my mate Jesse, who also has a Tayana, lent me some diving tanks before we left Marigot, and I got a chance to spend like three hours under the boat just getting her back to new. And I'm so, so glad I did, like, Jesse, mate, thank you, because I never would have got such a good job done with just my snorkel. Uh, and I reckon that's it brought us a, at least a knot, if not more. She's like a new boat today. <laughs> you are in a natural <laughs> cruising habitat, stuffing crackers in your face and hiding from the sun. <laughs> Behind the scenes access, sailing millennial falcon. <laughs> So when are you meant to see the green? Just as it disappears. Definitely for someone with cataracts. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Do you want to tell that story? Okay, so apparently when we're uh, when we're having some uh, some um, captain's hour drinks with uh, John Kreshma, he's like, oh yeah, I've seen the the green flash is when you um, is when the sun goes down and it's against water and uh, there's a, like a flash of green light just before the, just after the sun goes down. He's like, oh, I never used to believe it when I was younger. But when I got older, saw the green flash, and I totally believe it now. I've seen, a few I've seen it a few times. And Adam's like, so you didn't see it when you were younger, and you see it now. Sure, it's not cataracts. 
and everyone around is laughing too because it's like, check that out. Adam and I haven't seen it. And all the older people are like, it's definitely there, it's definitely there. I'm like, uh-huh, sure, sure. So if anyone's seen the green flash, please tell us because we have not. You might be seeing green flashing lights because you spend all your time staring at the sun at sundown. <laughs> Fortunately for me, John Kreshner, who has ha like ham fists uh, and is a giant man, took it in his stride and he has a very good sense of humour, so he didn't, he didn't box me around the ears for being a smart ass. It's day two on passage up to Bermuda and we are, um, we've just had a look, it's been one day and one hour. I was asleep so I couldn't do the exact 24 hours but in one day and one hour we have done 165 nautical miles and we're doing an average of about, well actually I don't know, I think it's about six and a half knots. So we have 700 miles to go. And it's gone to sleep. <laughs> oh okay. I got it, it's okay. Yeah so um, both Ads and I were saying like we have smashed it so far. 165 miles in like 25 hours. Oh my God, that's amazing. Like our boat thankfully has just broken all these records just when we're on this passage. So yeah, we, we're super, super stoked about that. We're, um, we're making good progress. I think that we um, were a little bit ahead of our plan and uh, but I, we do have the calm days coming up. So although we're trying to beat them, I don't know if we're going to beat them really.